Shores Town Council from May the 4th, 2021 is now in session. Before I ask you to lead to uh, I mean the moment in the Pledge of, si Pledge of Allegiance, uh, moment of silence, I would like to thank you, uh, all of you, for the many, many who have written to us voicing your opinions relative to beach nourishment and to our MSD question. I appreciate the fact that the majority of these emails were respectful of this council and understood the complexity of these issues and the potential impacts on each of us. Anyway, my thanks to you for, for sharing your thoughts with us. This time I'd ask you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd ask you to join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Council, I need a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. So moved. Thank you, Leo. Do I have a second? I second. Thank you, Jim. Any discussion, Council? If not, hearing none, I would say um, all in favor of approving the agenda, indicate by saying aye. 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 We have an agenda. Thank you. Council, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll move to approve the consent agenda. I would like to make a comment, though, before we move on. Go ahead. Um, just want to make a note that part of the consent agenda tonight indicates an increase in the, probably our town manager will talk about this, but uh, indicates that we're spending more money um, dealing with our solid waste, which means that we got more people here, folks. We got more people visiting. We got more people living. We got more trash being made, more commerce being uh, taking place, and so our costs of handling our solid waste are going up. So that's part of the consent agenda. By 25%. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. So I have a second to the motion to approve the agenda. Second. Agenda. Thank you. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 We have a consent agenda that's been approved. Thank you. This time we are here. I think we're going to hear from uh, Jennifer Harris, if I'm uh, correct. I, I just was, wanted to introduce the uh, the next two folks that are going to um, graciously have agreed to give us a presentation on the status uh, an update of the mid Currituck Bridge project. Um, we have Jennifer Harris with NCDOT uh, and the North Carolina Turnpike Authority, as well as Roger Rochelle, who's uh, the chief engineer with the North Carolina Turnpike Authority. And I believe that Roger's going to start things off. Thank you, Cliff. Good evening, and, and thank you so much for having us this evening. I'd love to join you in person, and hopefully we can do that soon. Um, I'm just going to start off with a few opening remarks. And Jennifer, she's going to talk as a refresher of what the scope of the project is, as well as what we've currently been working on and what the next steps are. Uh, as many of you know, uh, there was a legal challenge to our record of decision. That's the final decision document that completes the planning process. And so there may be questions this evening that we are um, not prepared to discuss as those legal proceedings are still occurring, but I don't anticipate that to be the case. I think we should be able to answer any and all questions you have. Uh, as the project construction has been delayed because of those legal proceedings, we recognize that there's a lot of work that we can be doing so that the construction goes more rapid. We do anticipate a design build contract to construct this project. So the more design we can get done, permit applications, other pre-construction activities, the faster the design build contract will go and the quicker we'll get to construction uh, once we are able to move forward with the project. So Jennifer's going to talk a lot about what we're doing currently and uh, the next steps. 
Uh, if there are any questions for me, I'd be glad to entertain them now, or we can let Jennifer go through the presentation and uh, please stop us along the way. Let's let Jennifer, Jennifer start with her, if that's okay with you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Again, I'm Jennifer Harris, and I have a presentation. I don't know if you want to enable me to share the screen yes, go ahead. or if they're already showing it in your room. No, go ahead and share it. Jennifer. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. Black feet hurting you. It it's still saying host disabled participant screen sharing. All right. Let me. Okay. If you have it there, then then that that works just as well. Um, so um, if you want to go to slide two, um, like Roger said, I'm just going to give a, a brief project overview and talk a little bit about some of the milestones we've accomplished on the project and talk some about the work that we've been doing and some next steps. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes. It's echoing a little bit. I hope that, I don't know if I can do anything to fix that. Um, next slide, project overview. Um, slide four. Um, as everyone knows, it's uh, we're talking about the mid Currituck Bridge. Um, in addition to a, a, a bridge across Currituck Sound, um, there is um, there are also several other components to the project, including a bridge over Maple Swamp, uh, interchange at US 158, roundabout at NC 12 on the Outer Banks, some widening on NC 12, and some additional um, improvements to US 158 near Southern Shores uh, in order to improve hurricane evacuation clearance times. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, the mid Currituck Bridge is just over four and a half miles long. Um, it would be a two lane bridge, so two 12 foot lanes and six foot shoulders. And it includes spanning narrow shore road on the mainland, uh, just on the edge of Currituck Sound before it takes off to cross the sound. Additionally, I mentioned the bridge over Maple Swamp between 158 and Currituck Sound. Um, it's, it's an area that's jurisdictional and um, we are bridging it on, in order to minimize impacts to the natural environment. Idle Road will remain open for local traffic between US 158 and idle it. And there's also a, a small portion of roadway between the Maple Swamp Bridge and where the Currituck Sound Bridge begins. The, uh, additionally, on the Outer Banks, um, there, we have a roundabout proposed to accept the, the bridge traffic um, and the intersection with NC-12. Next slide. We, we also have some widening um, just north and south of the bridge tying into NC-12, basically from uh, Devil's Bay north of the bridge to North Harbor View Drive. And with, with any transportation project of this size, we, like Roger mentioned, we go through an environmental study process um, one of the first things we do is we identify what the transportation needs are and what the purpose of the project is. And this particular project has three different aspects in terms of purpose and need. Um, purpose to substantially improve traffic flow, as well as reduce travel time between the Currituck County mainland and the Currituck County Outer Banks and reduce hurricane evacuation clearance times. And just a little bit more about those, those transportation needs and, and benefits that this project would serve. 
obviously, um, we, we um, anticipate that the duration of congestion on the summer weekend would be substantially less um, with a mid Crotuck bridge. Also, it's anticipated that that would result in a reduction of through traffic on local streets. And from a travel time standpoint, with the bridge in place, a trip from the Currituck County mainland to the Outer Banks using the mid Currituck Bridge would be an 11 mile trip. Um, also, for those that would choose to continue using the existing roads, with a bridge in place, folks that continue to use existing roads would also realize travel time reductions to the tune of 47 minutes for the same trip using existing roads, reduction of 47 minutes on a summer weekday, and a reduction of 105 minutes on a summer weekend. That's in the future year um, of, of the project, year 2035. Also, hurricane evacuation clearance time. Um, I'm sure you're familiar, but the clearance time, that doesn't mean how long it takes any one person to evacuate, but that's the, the period of time from when the start of an evacuation is ordered to when the everyone reaches the point of safety. And with the bridge in place, there are several hours of hurricane clearance time reduction that would be realized. Okay. Next, I just wanted to go over a few of those milestones um, in terms of the environmental study process, and then I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing now and, and next steps. As I mentioned, we uh, completed an environmental study in compliance with the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, and we completed the draft EIS in March of 2010, final EIS in January of 2012, and then because it had been more than three years since the approval of the final EIS, we had to do what's called a reevaluation. And that concluded that we did not need to prepare a supplemental environmental impact statement. The Federal Highway Administration made that determination. And in March of 2019, they issued the record of decision, which is that final decision document that Roger mentioned earlier. And just a little bit more about the reevaluation, like I said, because um, three years had passed, we evaluated changes in, in the project setting, changes in traffic, um, anything that had changed since the final EIS had been prepared. And as I mentioned, the Federal Highway Administration determined that the final EIS and the preferred alternative decision remains valid, and we did not need to prepare a supplemental EIS. Another thing I just wanted to mention, obviously this project is, is um, you know, a, a significant project and um, it meets certain criteria to um, do some additional cost estimate reviews um, required by Federal Highway Administration. So we went through a very rigorous process to look at all aspects of the project cost, uh, bring in subject matter experts and just make sure that we have a, a very, um, uh, well thought out cost for the project in terms of the, the cost for final design, the cost to build it, cost for right of way, as well as any utility uh, relocations and, and other utility work that is needed. And very high level, um, the major components of the project cost estimate are shown here. Um, you know, in the $500 million um, dollar range, when you take construction right-of-way and utilities costs. These are our latest estimates and what came out of that cost estimate review. Okay, ongoing work and next steps. Like Roger mentioned, um, as we're waiting for the legal proceedings to continue, um, if you don't mind flipping to the next, thank you. We've been doing a, a lot of coordination with environmental agencies. Um, obviously, that uh, as of late has been more remote in nature in terms of virtual meetings, but we've, we've had periodic coordination with the environmental agencies 
because we are working on the, the permit applications that we need for construction of the project. And we've also been working on furthering our design plans in terms of completing a set of right-of-way plans. And next steps would be to um, purchase the needed right-of-way, begin that utility coordination, and of course, uh, complete the plan of finance. I'm sure you're familiar that, that this is a this is a, a toll project. And so there are a number of things in terms of finance, um, in addition to some of the NCDOT funding that is part of the finance plan, we intend to sell toll revenue bonds and um, apply for a loan with the federal government, a TIFI loan, which is Transportation Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act. I'll stick with TIFI. Um, but it's a low interest loan through the federal government that uh, we would seek to be part of the plan of finance. And, I, and Roger already mentioned, um, we would um, go through a procurement process to get a design build team on board to do the final design and ultimately build the project. And I don't know, Roger, if you're wanting to add anything to what I just discussed in terms of what we've been working on and what our next steps are. Well, if you want to discuss the status of the permit applications and particularly the work with the Coast Guard, that might be helpful. Okay, awesome. So um, if you don't mind going ahead and go into that next slide, it does have a list of the permits that uh, the entities, the agencies that we need permits from, the, the bulleted list on the left. Um, we need the 401 water quality certification, the 404 individual permit from the Corps of Engineers. We need a CAMA permit. And we also need uh, permits from the Coast Guard. And as Roger mentioned, um, we've, we've reached some milestones or some pro made some progress in terms of um, coordination with the Coast Guard. We've gotten what they call a preliminary navigation clearance determination for the Currituck Sound Bridge. And um, in order to uh, provide for current and prospective reasonable needs of navigation, they've made a determination that um, we should have at least 20 feet of vertical clearance above mean high water and at least 40 feet of horizontal clearance through the main navigation span of the bridge. So we've gotten some certainty there in terms of what the bridge um, clearance needs to be. We also have some um, um, clarity on the Maple Swamp Bridge that there is no, um, there is no navigation um, span needed for that, which we didn't think there would be, but it's a box we had to check. So we've, we've done that coordination and gotten that documentation um, from the Coast Guard. The bulleted list on the on the right um, are agencies that we also coordinate with, and they have a um, role in commenting um, to the permitting agencies. So, um, as you can see, it's an extensive list of state and federal environmental agencies that we have been working with. And um, here's. Con Information. We do have a project webpage and a project email address and a project hotline. Um, we field questions from citizens from time to time that either go on the webpage and, and find the email address for the project or call the hotline. So just wanted to make sure that everyone had those resources available. Um, if, if you or um, any of your constituents um, have questions about the project, we're happy to, to talk to them and answer questions. And that concludes what, what's in the PowerPoint presentation. So i um, happy to answer questions or um, however you'd like to proceed. Uh, thank, thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you, Jennifer. We appreciate it. I want to ask if council, anyone on council has questions for you, council? No, I don't have any. I'd, I would just like to ask if you have a, a projected start date. I've heard lots of stories and rumors, but is, is there still any possibility of giving us a start date for this at all? It's so difficult not knowing how fast the legal proceedings or the results of those will be. 
I will say officially we maintain a contract letting list for all DOT projects. Most recently, the let date was scheduled for October of this year. Uh, however, we've just moved that uh, about eight months to June of 2022, knowing that there was no way the current status of the legal proceedings that we can make in October 21 let date. If, for instance, we were able to let this in June of 2022, we would envision about a year's worth of pre-construction work before construction could start. That is to say, um, we wouldn't anticipate construction starting until late 23 at the earliest. Thank you, Roger. Council, anybody else have a question? Can I ask a question? Sure, please. Uh, Jennifer and Roger, I, I thank you very much for your time and uh, presenting this to us. Obviously, this, this bridge um, means a lot to the folks in Southern Shores. Um, you know, many of us in this room believe that this bridge is going to uh, greatly reduce the amount of traffic that's coming over from Currituck and making its way through Southern Shores. So in, in the studies that you've done, um, have you been able to determine, I guess, one, um, how many cars are actually coming across that um, Wright Brothers Bridge and how, and how many you think this bridge will re reduce uh, in, in the volume coming across? I don't have those numbers off the tip of my tongue, but I'm happy to, to, to look into that and, and, and provide the information to you. Okay. Well, um, but, but clearly, you know, with those, the information presented about the <clears throat> travel time reduction, you know, the, the, the fact that with the bridge in place for those people that would continue to use existing roads, those are some pretty substantial travel time reductions that would be in place. So clearly there is a, a, you know, enough traffic that would use the mid Currituck bridge to improve those travel times, but I don't have exact volumes um, on the top of my head, but I, I can certainly um, provide that to you. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Cliff, anything else? Once again, we want to thank you for your presentation this afternoon. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. This time I'll call on our deputy town, town manager and our planning director, Wes Haskett. Good evening, Wes. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, members of council as well. I um, have a brief report for y'all tonight for uh, the month of April and some other activities. Uh, with respect to April permits, uh, a total of 58 permits were issued that consisted of six zoning permits, 21 building permits, 29 trade permits, and two lot disturbance permits. The total amount of fees collected in April was $16,546.10. A um, little bit of information about our Historic Landmarks Commission and the town's flat tops. Uh, the Historic Landmark Commission and some of the flat top houses in the town will be highlighted in a piece by Miramar McNaughton on coastal architecture in uh, Our State Magazine. Um, it's a 28-page photo essay that will probably be released uh, by the middle or to the end of this month. Um, so Miramar worked on that and she was in communication with us to obtain some information about it. So be on, be on the lookout for that. That should be pretty good. Um, with respect to something on your agenda tonight, um, GTA 2102, Temporary Health Care Structures. Uh, we are requesting that council table consideration of that ZTA tonight, and we will bring it back to you after revisions have been made and the planning board has reviewed it again. Uh, so we ask that you consider that when you get to that point on the agenda tonight, just uh, motion and vote to uh, table it. Table it. To, for, for further consideration at a later date. And lastly, with respect to the planning board, uh, they will meet May 17th, 5.30 p.m. here in the Pitt Center. Uh, the purpose is to consider ZTA 2102, if you all do or are inclined to table it tonight, and ZTA 2105, a text amendment application submitted by the town to amend town code section 3657, 3689, and 36-168. 
The board will also consider a preliminary subdivision plat submitted by Lauren Van Riper to subdivide the property located at 279 Hillcrest Drive. That concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. If y'all have any questions, I can try to answer them. Thank you, Wes. Council? <laughs> any questions? No, I don't have any. When did you say the planning board was going to meet, Wes? May 17th. At? 5.30. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anything else? Thank you, Wes. Thank you, all. This time I'll call on David Cole, our police chief. Good evening, David. Good evening, Mayor. Members of council, I've been vaccinated, and I'm not going to try to talk through this <laughs> mask. Uh, April 2021, police department's uh, report. We had a total of 1,580 calls for service. That's reduction of 631, not to worry. 400 of those are property checks. So there's about 400 properties that we're no longer checking that people are actually either renting or they're living in. And another 200 of those are uh, reduction is business checks. As you can see under the incidents um, over here, not up here like usual, <laughs> Uh, we had one reported rape. I want you to understand that that was unfounded. And that was not true. Um, you can see some of the highlights. The big one is, is again, uh, we had 10 uh, drug-related uh, incidents, five driving while intoxicated. Uh, we had one death investigation, which was a DOA. It was not. Uh, this time it was not an uh, overdose. Uh, for a total of 29 uh, offenses. Under the criminal arrest, we had six criminal arrests that resulted in 10 total charges. Four of those were a result of the 10 drug uh, incidents, and four of those were uh, for driving while intoxicated. Uh, under, out of 87 traffic stops for the month of April, the officers issued uh, 22 written citations, which resulted in 29 charges and they issued another 37 warning citations that resulted in an additional 41 total charges. We had zero ordinances, but our community resource officer will be starting next week or ne in two weeks. So that'll start changing with parking enforcement and beach patrols. And we had uh, three total motor vehicle accidents. Uh, and as you well know, one of those was a result of a uh, pedestrian fatality. Um, one other thing, thank you, uh, officer Josh Livermore and his wife, Marissa are the proud parents of their first child. Uh, this is Remy Lynn. She was born Saturday at 3 AM in the morning. And like most first time fathers, he did not have a weight and he did not have <laughs> the length. Um, we got one more coming up and in about three weeks too. So <laughs> we're going to be shorthanded this, this summer, but for good reasons. Any questions? Council? No. no. Thank you. Thank Chief. you. Appreciate it. This time I'll call on Ed Limbacher, our, our fire, fire chief. Good evening, Ed. Good evening, Ed. Good evening Council. Uh, for the month of April, the fire department responded to a total of 64 calls, uh, three structure fires, one fire in the building that did not involve the structure, one construction or demolition landfill fire, which was actually in Roanoke Island, uh, 45 or 41 medical calls, one motor vehicle accident versus pedestrian, one lock-in, which was in the marketplace, a child was locked in the car, Three gas leaks, one electrical wiring problem, four service calls, one smoke or odor removal, one assist the police or government agency, one public service, one authorized burning, one cover up or standby, and three alarms. Again, for a total of 64 this month. Uh, last year at this time, we were at 31, so we're kind of back to our summertime deal. We'll start climbing now until. September or so, I hope ends then. But um, any questions on the report right now? 
Thank God. Go ahead. So I did just have uh, some things I wanted to talk about from this weekend. But uh, first, as always, I always want to uh, understand and appreciate all the support that the town and the council, you as council, give us. Um, we're very fortunate to have a very good relationship with you guys, as you know, in the past. It hasn't always been that way, but I appreciate the relationship we have with you guys, and I'm sure you do as well with us. Uh, most of you in this room know me pretty well. I've been a chief for eight years now, so you should pretty much understand where I'm coming from. Uh, I really don't like to boast or brag a lot about the department or the members in it. However, sometimes I do feel that it's necessary. Tonight, unfortunately for you, is going to be one of those times. Um, I take the opportunity when it's appropriate. If for no other reason, just to keep you informed, the members of council and also the community and the residents on what the department does and how much our volunteers uh, sacrifice and give them themselves. And I cannot say from a personal standpoint how much I appreciate their time dedication and performance. And I actually saved a text message. I wanted to make sure I read it tonight because I felt like it was very important. And I plan on reading it at training as well when I get there tonight. But um, it's from a neighboring chief with a all paid department. Chief, I would really like to take the time to uh, thank you for your assistance last night. It was greatly appreciated. You should be extremely proud of how your troops are formed in every regard. We will talk soon so I can go into more detail. So you can see that the guys are training, we're working hard and doing a good job for people. So I just want to talk a little bit about this weekend. Since Friday, the department, our volunteers have uh, responded to 20 calls. Now to some, 20 calls may not seem like a lot. However, let's not ever forget this. Our volunteers have regular lives and personal commitments, right? These call for service interrupt that. They interrupt their lives, right? So these 20 calls took approximately 35 hours out of their weekend. I don't know about you, but how many of you all can squeeze an extra 35 hours into your weekend? <laughs> That's kind of a lot. Let's take example, just Sunday evening into Monday morning. So Sunday evening, we were at a structure fire, meaning the department, from 8 p.m. till 10.15. We get home, clean up. They get home, go to sleep. It may be what? By the time you wind down, it's 11.30, okay? Then we're back up at 3 a.m. for another structure fire on Twyford Road in Kitty Hawk. They're there from 3 a.m. till 7 a.m. Come back, clean up. Without missing a beat, they're at work or some other personal commitment. So all day they're going on four hours, three hours sleep, right? <clears throat> I don't know about you all, but uh, I can tell you from personal experience, it's pretty taxing on your body. And the older I get, <laughs> the more taxing it gets. But um, I'd just like to provide you some insight on what I mean when I say taxing on your body or when we're when I say we're at a working incident or working structure fire or something like that so you understand I have a couple of props I like to do this because it keeps people interested and it shows it puts something in your mind a picture in your mind so just a couple of helmets from this weekend now I'll show you the before and after but just from this weekend and the events that we were on this weekend So those of you all know our deputy chief, this is his helmet from this weekend. Now it's obviously clean. That's after they've cleaned it. This is supposed to look like that. This is one of my kids. I say my kids because he's been with me a long time. Could be my kid. One of my favorite guys, again, clean. This is what it looks like after he cleaned it. Wow. This is what it's supposed to look like. So you can see, and I bring it up for a couple of reasons. Take the Twyford Road fire, for example. We're close proximity, we're the second engine crew due in. We grab it, secure a water supply, and we're on the initial attack crew in the front door. These two guys, the deputy chief and one and Logan, one of my one of my lieutenants, are on the initial line to the second floor. When they get to the second floor, visibility is zero. So all close your eyes, and that's what they're seeing. All you can do is feel the heat. They open a the line up, put out some fire, and head to the third floor where the real fire is. Well, just about the time they get up there and they're putting out some fire, the incident commander's telling them, hey, I think it might be time to back out. They hit the horns because the heat is pushing them out. So the amount of heat that it takes to damage something like this, and that one as well, you can imagine what kind of heat they're feeling. 
why should you care? Well, you should care because they're doing it for free. These guys are not paid. They're not me. I'm expected to be there. They are not. So I just think it's, we've just, the reason why I say it is because I just think it's important that everybody understands that these guys and girls that we have at our department give their time and energy for free. They care about helping people. And they put themselves, obviously, in great harm. So I just think it's important at times to make sure, and I don't like to do it all the time, but I like to make sure they understand that what you're getting on a cost-effective basis, this is costing other people millions of dollars. So I just like to make sure you understand, well, yes, we have beautiful equipment. I am thankful for that. And we have, obviously have a beautiful station. That's, that's awesome. But we are nothing without our guys, without our volunteers, without our men and women that do it. And Jenny was at both of these, all three of these over the weekend. So I know that Jim, or I mean, um, I think Jim does, and I know that Councilman Holland yeah. keeps up on Facebook also. So if you ever want to see what we're up to, but I just wanted to make sure I told people tonight because I thought it was really taxing over the weekend, and I think it was worth mentioning. So does anybody have any questions? <clears throat> any questions, Council? But just keep up the great job. Thank you. I didn't do much. It's all the guys doing it. Well, so. you and your guys and gals. <laughs> I just want to thank you once again, Ed, for the job you do and, and the oh, people you've got working with you. I don't do anything. It's all the guys below me that do it. I'm mm -hmm. nothing without the guys below me. So. You say that, but leadership means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Can I make a suggestion, though, to the fire chief? Sure. Um, chief, what I'd like to suggest, just give it some thought coordinate with a town manager and pull your guys in here so we can publicly thank them for their volunteerism and their service. I will ask them, but most of them are worse than me about boasting or they just like, <laughs> but I will express your, your gratitude to them tonight when I get the training. So thank you. Thanks again, Ed. Good evening, Claire. Um, I, I, before I give my a brief presentation, I just want to take a second to recognize and appreciate the town clerk, Sheila Kane. <laughs> she had to hustle tonight um, to get ready for this meeting. We had some technical difficulties, as you can see, from the wires hanging. Yeah. Um, thankfully, she was able to uh, get us up and going. And um, But I apologize for this interruption, but I do appreciate Sheila uh, getting it done. Um, just briefly, I wanted to uh, let the uh, council know, as, as you know, the um, uh, Councilman Holland and I attended the North Carolina Beach and Inlet Waterways Association Spring Conference uh, last week, last Monday and Tuesday. Mayor Pro Tem was able to participate uh, remotely. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the association that uh, makes up a large majority of the coastal towns and communities. Um, they come together to discuss the, the issues, bless you, bless you, that are surrounded to, um, that we face. Um, we hear, we get a lot of um, presentations from the core, from the state water resources, DEQ. Um, there's energy, um, energy meetings, coastal resiliency, um, and there's a lot of information shared at that that's useful. Uh, as you know, we're working our way through the uh, pavement study with CEPI. Um, I, I am hopeful that we'll have the, the results of that to present to you at hopefully in, uh, in June. Um, at your last meeting, we took off the agenda, the noise ordinance, felt like it needed some more work. Uh, Councilman Holland and Neil and uh, Police Chief um, and Deputy Town Manager and I have met, and we feel like we've got an ordinance that uh, we can put before you at your March 18th meeting for approval. Um, last week, end of, I guess, the end of the week before and the beginning of last week, Aptum was here. Aptum's the surveying arm of coastal planning and engineering, uh, gathering, gathering the data for the next round of beach profile surveys. I uh, hope to have those results to present soon. Um, you may have read uh, in, the, in the news about some of the issues that Dare County is facing with uh, keeping their public work staff fully fully employed and, and hiring and retaining folks. One of the casualties of, of the, that employee loss is the the uh, the 
permitting program that we share with uh, the town of Kitty Hawk that allows us to carry our debris and recycling and the heavy bulk items uh, to them. That, that program has been suspended until the county can address those staffing level levels. So hopefully that can be accomplished without much more inconvenience. Um, and lastly, I wanted to give you an update. Uh, you, you passed the resolution, I believe at your last meeting, um, opposing the House Bill 401 and Senate Bill 349. And these are the bills that have been um, labeled as increasing housing opportunities. Uh, I, I believe the crossover deadline is coming up in the next week or so. But right now the House Bill, uh, it's had no action that, that I can see from March 25th where it still sits in the Committee on State Government and in the, the Senate side, uh, on April 26th, that bill, the Senate side of that bill was re-referred to a finance committee. So I, I, there's been a tremendous amount of opposition across the state um, about some of the, you know, the local authority that it takes from us as far as our zoning for single family dwellings and, and residential neighborhoods. Um, so we continue to keep an eye on that. You, you might want to amplify a bit on that as far as what those bills are tried to do. I, a lot of folks in the audience may not know. The intent, as I understand it, of those bills was to allow duplexes, triplexes, multifamily, mobile homes, um, just about any um, residential use you can think of in all zoning districts that allow single family dwellings. And of course, we have, we're obviously predominantly a residential community and, and we've zoned ourselves that way and we've tried um, to develop ourselves with with that in mind, if these bills were passed, you would, we would have no authority to regulate um, those uses on vacant lots. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you. Appreciate you, you explaining that. Town Attorney, Mr. Gallup. There you are. I don't have anything to report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Good evening. This time I'll open general public comment. Can I ask Cliff a question? Yes, I'm sorry. Cliff, do we have any update on the Sea Oats project? The what project? Um, Paving project. Okay. David had to leave, but um, a, a couple of weeks ago, they started doing the saw cutting for the driveways. Mm -hmm. the, way the, the way the schedule is laid out for this construction project, they have until sometime in July to finish this. But there was a gap between on the schedule between the saw cutting okay. and when they actually come back to start laying the road, um, which is supposed to occur probably within the next week or so. I, I, I can get that information, you know, front and center on our website to let folks know. We've communicated mm -hmm. with the folks on the Sea Oats, and there's a place on our website where you can go and get this information. But um, you know, when when you let a project like this, you give a wide window of time to get the project done in hopes of getting the best price. But when you do that, you you leave time for the contractor to start, go away, come back. And uh, that's you. kind of what we're seeing now. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Cliff. Cliff, Sorry. can you still close those roads during construction during the summer? Um, there, there will be some, definitely be some lane closures starting in late May, 1st of June. It's on CO. Yes, sir. Yeah, on CO. We'll start over. Uh, first person on the list to speak tonight is Paul Borsellino. Good evening, Paul. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm Paul Borsellino. I live at 16 7th Ave, Southern Shores. Wonderful Southern Shores. Who has treated the citizens of Southern Shores equally for a long time. But tonight, as you decide about MSDs, you may make a decision that no longer treats people equally, but rather treats them according to the neighborhood they live in. I'm requesting that as you listen to people tonight that you keep an open mind. I hope you haven't decided yet how to vote about the MSDs. As people come up and talk to you tonight, 
I request that you pretend that you live in one of the proposed MSDs. I don't know where all of you live. Maybe you don't live in them. Pretend you do tonight as people talk about the MSD funding system for beach nourishment. I'm into pretending tonight. Another pretend that I'd ask maybe you do is pretend that the street in front of your house needs to be rebuilt like East Dogwood needed to be rebuilt east of Route 12. And pretend that as that project starts getting talked about, that someone proposes that it be funded through an MSD system and that you living on that street will be taxed at a higher rate than everyone who lives elsewhere because you live on that street and you have demonstrably more benefit from that street being rebuilt. I believe that's the word that's used, demonstrably more benefit. Also, as people address you tonight, and in the emails that you received, Mr. Mayor, you made reference to all the emails that you received. I don't know what those emails said, but think about how many of them said, don't vote for MSDs, and how many of them came forward and said, oh, please do MSDs, I think it's a great idea. I don't know what the numbers are. Maybe what I'm saying is against my argument against MSDs, but I'd ask you to think about that. Also, as you hear from people and in the emails that you received, I'm guessing that anyone who was opposed to MSDs was not saying they don't want to pay their fair share. Everyone you hear from tonight, I believe, will say that they want to pay their fair share. They, don't, they just don't want to pay three times their fair share, which is what they would be doing according to their property value if you approve the MSD system. The biggest expenditure you'll ever approve is probably this beach nourishment project. It certainly would be the biggest that you've approved so far or any other council. That's, that's the time the expense should be spread among the most people. Thank you very much. Please vote against MSDs. Thank you, Paul. Ron Forbes. Good evening, Brian. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, members of the town council, my name is Brian Forbes. My wife, Lynn, and I uh, are full-time residents and we live over in Pelican Watch. It, it seems the rationale for establishing MSDs in Southern Shores is that properties located near the beach will benefit more from beach nourishment than the rest of the town. While that may be true from a property damage perspective for a few beachfront homes, the entire town benefits from having a viable beach, a beach that doesn't force beachgoers into the dunes at high tide. We all know the beach provides jobs and incomes to local residents and businesses. It generates occupancy taxes, sales taxes, entertainment taxes, and increased business taxes that benefit us all by reducing the taxes we would otherwise have to pay both the town to the town and the county. Everyone benefits. We in MSD1 pay higher taxes and are the source of most of the occupancy taxes received by the town. We probably use the least amount of services provided by the town, yet on a pro rata basis contribute more for such services than those outside the proposed MSDs. The beach is the most important component of the town's infrastructure and the only one that generates revenue. The issue is how much is it worth to the town and how many residents appreciate the value they receive from the beach. The town is just as vulnerable to loss in the event of a catastrophic storm as are the owners of beachfront property. One difference is that homeowners can collect insurance and move on. The town, on the other hand, stands to permanently lose a significant portion of its tax base, as happened in Kitty Hawk and South Nags Head before uh, beach nourishment was a reality. Homeowners buy insurance to protect against catastrophic loss the town should do the same. Think of beach nourishment as being insurance the town can and should buy to protect its tax base. We don't understand why, given that we generate more revenue for the town, the town feels compelled to increase our taxes significantly more than the rest of the town. Consider the multi-million dollar canal dredging project in the town's March 7th, 2014 update of the dredging project, the town council spokesman stated, and I quote, 
This project will have a positive impact on all property values in the town and will ultimately benefit all our citizens through the effect of a growing and property base. It also, it only adds to the attractiveness of the town and Southern Shores as a place to live and visit. Certainly, those words apply to beach nourishment. If ever there was a reason to establish a municipal service district, the dredging project is a textbook example. The canals, for the most part, only benefit those who live on them. Although I support a canal dredging project, I accrued no benefit that I'm aware of. The rationale that was used by the town council for canal dredging project should be the same rationale for beach nourishment. If there was no need for an MSDs then, there is certainly no, certainly no need now. Everyone paid for the canals, everyone should pay for the beach. Taxpayers should be treated equally. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Dave Mackey. Good evening, Dave. Thank you, good evening. I too am opposed to MSDs, um, but a big part of why I'm opposed at the, is, is the example tax rates that were shared. And I know we're not voting on tax rates tonight but the tax rates that were shared in a meeting packet would indicate that the average MSD one property owner is paying about $3,500 a year in perpetuity, essentially. Uh, and that's if property values don't go up. The average owner in zone two is paying, I think it was 790 or 785 or something along those lines. And what was left off of that example was what does the person in the rest of the town pay? And you can extrapolate from those numbers that the average person outside of those zones is paying something like $300 or maybe even less. And, and I'm sort of looking at you because I, I know you, you shared that packet with me originally and explained some of it. But the point is, $150, $200, dollars versus $3,500 is, is way out of balance. This, this project is basically being proposed in such a way that zone one and zone two will fund all of it and will carry a very heavy burden and the rest of the town will carry a negligible burden in property taxes. And it multiplies by the fact that it is going to keep going on. And we expect, although that's an unknown, we expect to re-nourish periodically. And, I, and I'll, I, I had a terrible nightmare the other night when I thought about what property did here on the ocean in, in the early 2000s. I mean, property, luckily, my property increased by about fivefold. In, in a very short period of time. And then luckily right now, decreased again to about half of that. But just imagine if 10 years from now, that $3,500 average is a $7,000 average with a price increase for more nourishment, nour nourishment and, and increases in property taxes and so forth. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, I understand why the model was developed, but it is a flawed model. And I would ask you very much to, to uh, at a minimum, vote against those tonight. But uh, if, if you're not going to do that, then at least look very hard at the tax rates. The tax rate for MSD1 is more than 10 times greater than the tax rate for the rest of the town. I don't disagree that oceanfront owners should pay more, but I do disagree that it, that it is going to be way disproportionately out of balance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bonnie Anderson. Good evening, Bonnie. Oh, it's nice to be able to breathe. Thank you. Um, I'm Bonnie Anderson from 6 Yellow Fin Lane. Um, we've owned our little cottage for 35, 36 years now. And as the first speaker said, uh, We've paid our fair share. We pay our taxes on time. We uh, have no problem with them cleaning out the bulkheads and the canals. But guaranteed, this town makes more money off of the few renters that we have in our little cottage, which was an original stick cottage, than we get in benefits. We think it's really unfair that you are considering these MSDs MDAs, S, whatever they are, um, as uh, we should pay more for our little oceanfront cottage than people that have some massive houses in town because they can use the beach. 
That's the whole bottom line about being in this town is it is available to everyone. So we don't feel, and we know that we would not be able to afford the type of tax increases that you're talking about. So you have to also take into consideration the little folk here. We don't have a big house. We have a little house. But we give just as much to this town as anybody else. So please vote no. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Paula Sherlock. I know you're here. There you are. Good evening, Paula. Good evening, Mayor Bennett and council members. My name is Paula Sherlock. My husband and Ike and I reside at 66 Ocean Boulevard. Uh, we also oppose the MSDs for many of the same reasons as people here have said, basically a fairness issue. <clears throat> we also object to what will be by my calculations, between a 30 and 40 percent, probably around 35 percent hike in our property taxes, which are already substantial. Um, we are joined in these objections by our neighbors, Jesse and Mark Thompson of 68 Ocean Boulevard, Jim and Katie Owens of 50 and 54 Ocean Boulevard, Pam and Steve Huber at 52, Steve Love at 62 and 64, Tim Panhoff at 104 Ocean Boulevard, Van and Karen Price at 18 Ocean Boulevard, Craig and Nancy Hearn at 18 Pelican Watch, Charlie Nash and Tracy Style at 26 Pelican Watch, and Jim and Sherry Elwood at 102 Ocean Boulevard. <clears throat> I know that you have received emails and phone calls from a number of these people. They've made excellent arguments and I hope you will uh, consider them. I've reviewed the applicable North Carolina statutes, and I agree with others in this group that I do not believe a case can be made to demonstrate a benefit equal to such an increase in our property taxes. 10%, yes, we're all willing to pay our fair share. 20%, probably. 30 to 40% is simply unfair. <clears throat> Mere proximity to a project that improves Southern Shores does not establish a benefit substantial enough to justify this kind of increase. If our homes and our oceanfront were uh, imminently threatened, uh, we'd feel quite differently about this, uh, but they're not. This project benefits tourism, it benefits rental income, and it benefits all Southern Shores properties. We ask, like others have asked, that this, the cost of this project be fairly apportioned among the citizens of Southern Shores. We know we're going to pay more. Um, I'm also, I have a smaller house on the Ocean Boulevard, but it's, uh, we pay $8,500 a year in taxes already. So we would ask that the, this project be fairly apportioned across the community. We also respect the fact that this is a very difficult situation, and we appreciate the thought that we've given to it. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara Johnston. Good evening. Mayor, Town Council, my name is Barbara Johnston. I'm here today to ask you to vote no on MSDs. My husband, Michael, and I are full-time permanent residents residing at one Pelican Watch Way. We bought 25 years ago, rented our house out for 20 years, and retired here three and a half years ago. We love the community of Southern Shores. In your resolution, you said that the purpose of the MSD was to maintain a wide recreation beach strand and protective sandbar system to protect the public's ability to use the beach, to protect structures of historic significance, to maintain a tax and economic base, and to protect infrastructure, including facilities for public recreational access. The beach is public and tourism fuels our economy 
and keeps all of our taxes at a reasonable level. All the residents living in Southern Shores know this. Most visitors come here because they want the beach. Otherwise, they would vacation elsewhere. Without the tourism dollars, how high would our taxes be to fund our basic services? Beach nourishment will give our whole community the peace of mind to know that tourism will continue to fund our resources. We all benefit from it. To single out certain areas of our community to pay higher taxes is just wrong. MSDs were not created for any other project in our community. Parts of our community did not benefit from other town improvements because they did not live in that area, such as the canal dredging. But we all paid for the improvements and did not object because we are one community. Beach nourishment should not be treated any differently. The whole community benefits from it, not just a few people. We are one town, one community. To separate us through MSDs is divisive and not in keeping with the community spirit. Just because other communities have adopted MSDs does not mean Southern Shores should do so. Furthermore, to adopt them, not act them on right now, but use them for the future is also wrong. They're wrong for our community, and I ask you please vote no for the MSDs. Thank you. This time we have a couple other people who um, wrote in for uh, to be have a, their letter included in the public comments. So I'm, I'm going to ask Elizabeth to take, take one, and I'll take one. And we'll go from there. This is from uh, Mr. Panoff, who owns a property at 104 Ocean Boulevard. Um, I know that you all have received the email below that I copied from another property owner. I continue to struggle with the concept that I am receiving a demonstrative greater benefit. Reading the below, it seems, it seems clear that the town has a double standard on how to fund projects in Southern Shores. The dredging of a canal provided absolutely no benefit to my property, but yet I helped fund this project through property taxes. I continue to read responses from neighbors and from the town. It's clear that we all have no issue supporting the beach nourishment, but to pay a disproportionate amount in taxes on a false claim of the oceanfront property gets more benefit is wrong. And the fact that a canal project was paid for equally based on property values, but now the town wants to charge oceanfront disproportionately more is just unjust and quite frankly, upsetting. This is a double standard. Please do the right thing and vote no. Thank you, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is a letter from Karen and Van Price, who uh, lived just north of Pelican Watch on Ocean Boulevard, Highway 12. Dear Mayor, dear Mayor Bennett and Council, <clears throat> the Town Council should not establish municipal service districts in Southern Shores. I'm not against beach nourishment. However, I'm completely against MSDs to pay for any town project. MSDs are not the answer to pay for a benefit from which the entire town benefits. The most fair and equi equitable solution is for everyone to pay the same tax rate as has been done since the town was incorporated. MSDs make for bad policy and will further divide the town. The proposed plan is inequitable and unjust because 90% of the town is not included in the MSDs. And those that are in the MSDs are already paying the highest taxes in Southern Shores while receiving the least benefits from, from their tax dollars. It appears that 90% of the town is getting a free ride. Those in MSD1 will pe be paying nearly 25% more on their taxes, which will increase their taxes by over $3,000 a year per property owner. We've heard these numbers earlier this evening. This $3,000 will be on top of the other taxes of over $8,000. Thus, MSD1 will be paying nearly $12,000 of property taxes a year. How is that equitable when the citizens not in MSD1 or MSD2 will be paying considerably less? And getting more benefits. The unfair proposal is set to have to have those in MSD1 pay taxes in both MSD1 as well as MSD2 plus the standard tax. Make no mistake, this proposal is a triple, triple tax taxation, making MSD1 pay an increase of nearly, increase of nearly 25%. Please note that Highway 12 runs through the heart of MSD1 and MSD2. 
and it's a state highway that the town does not maintain and does not pay for. Remember, those, those people affected by the possible MSDs have been paying to subsidize other projects townwide for decades, such as roads, bridges, canals, parks, bike trails, etc. And these citizens have never complained. MSDs go against the nature of the community and township. Excuse me, are you, are you timing me on this one, Sheila? All right. Um, town sh the town sh should and must work together for common goal. These goal, the, those with the highest property tax values pay the most taxes already and not need an additional unfair and inequitable tax singled out on only less than 10% of the town. All taxes should be raised at the same rate evenly across the board and those with more expensive properties will, st will still pay the highest taxes, which is only fair. The town has always worked together to provide the best services for its taxpayers. MSDs only divide the town and cause unnecessary friction and unfairness. Beach nourishment is something which the entire town benefits. This proposal will set a dangerous precedent, sending the town down a slippery slope because this action will bring an a la carte menu for all future projects. We do not want, we do, do we want an MSD to be created for, for a canal project? Do we want it, MSD to be created for bridges or roads? When it's time to pave a street or dredge a canal, it should set the precedent for those owners, owners adjacent to those amenities to pay for it with a new MSD. For a park, does that mean all those people who, who probably touches the park will pay for it? The divisive policies of MSEs have no place in Southern Shores. We get enough divisive politics coming out of Washington. Public comments at the March meeting clearly showed there was no support for MSEs at all as they determined to be un as they were determined to be unfair and inequitable, which was even noted by town council. Again, MSD MSDs are a bad policy that create a friction, great friction among residents pitting neighbor against neighbor. We live in Southern Shores because we want tranquility and harmony. The town should have a uniform tax rate shown wide, townwide with no MSDs. Either we are a town or we are not. On May 4th, please vote against the creation of MSDs. Thank you, Karen, Oliver Price, and Van Price. You got one more, I think. I do. So this is from the Conlins. Uh, their property is located at 190 Ocean Boulevard. Dear Cliff and Southern Shores Town Council, thank you for holding the public hearing on March 16th, 2021 to consider the establishment of two new municipal service districts related to the town of Southern Shores beach erosion control and flood and hurricane protection works project. My wife and I were not able to attend since we reside in Pennsylvania, but we did watch the event via live stream on YouTube. Our property in Southern Shores is at 190 Ocean Boulevard and will be included in the proposed district one. We are recent owners, purchased our property in July of 2020, and are new to this debate on the beach nourishment project. Although new owners, we have rented beach houses throughout the Outer Banks on at least 20 separate summers. The bottom line, as you have stated, is that the vast majority of property owners in Southern Shores are here because of the beach. The beach is the focal point and all benefit. I have read all the posted comments on the website as of April 28, 2021, we respect the opinions of those who believe and, and who do not believe we need this project. Our opinion is that committing to a recurring five-year replenishment plan seems too aggressive and doing nothing may be too little. We would suggest we execute the 2022 plan and then continue monitoring the beaches and address additional work on an as-needed basis. In regards to the topic of the March 16th, 2021 meeting establishing two municipal service districts, and the approval vote of April 13, we disagree with the establishment of the MSDs. The MSDs will be an increase in the property tax only on selected Southern Shores properties when all will benefit. This seems counterintuitive. It also seems we are creating a new solution when the current property tax process can easily raise the necessary funds as is, is understood by property owners and includes an appeal process. The property tax assessment process, while not perfect, is a tried and true process and allocates higher assessments based on proximity to the beach and other relevant factors we are all knowledgeable of. It also has the aforementioned appeal process for property owners to appeal an assessment they believe is inaccurate. The town of Southern Shores certainly has access to this data and should be able to run models to determine the least amount of tax increase to cover the cost of the program. In this manner, all property owners and beneficiaries of the program will participate in the cost. And those who own property closer to the beach 
will pay more based on an already established and utilized methodology. Those who have purchased highly assessed properties understood this situation when they purchased the property, regardless of when they purchased it. Those like us who purchased oceanfront property understand the risk and the additional costs associated with that location. However, creating two additional layers of tax via the MSD proposal is excessive, unless you can demonstrate how the project will lower insurance costs, change floodplain designation, or reduce risk for those properties in the districts, the majority of the benefits are the improved public beach. Similar suggestions and comments have been made by others who submitted their comments and are posted on the website. For your reference, I believe they are Judge Paula Sherlock, Brian Spittle, Paul Borzellino, Dave Mackey, Michael Johnston, Andy Moynihan, and David B. Parks, attorney at law. Sincerely, Paul and Pat Conlon. Thank you, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. Having no further sign-ups for, for a public comment, this time I would close public comment and move on to the next item of business. Can we take a break? Yes, we can. Oh, thank you. Uh, Five minutes. Yes. Okay. I want to recess for about five to seven minutes, just just for, just to get away from this for a few minutes and come back later. But you're welcome to rejoin. We'd ask you to rejoin us in about seven minutes. We're not going to adjourn. We're going to just recess. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me of that. You can be back in five minutes. It's wonderful.